Hey, welcome back. This is Sid. Today we are going to see the best way to remove noise in Photoshop. So noise has been the biggest issue to tackle since I started with Photoshop version 4 way back in 1999. And no, I'm not talking about CS4. That came a decade later. Since then, handling noise is as big of an issue even now in CC 2019. But if you're interested in learning what I found to be the best possible technique to remove noise, then keep watching. So there are two types of noise that you will come across. One is the chrominance or the chroma noise where the color is affected and the other is the luminance or luma noise where only the luminosity of the pixels are affected. And both of them combined is the noise we usually get in a single photograph, mainly due to high ISOs and sensor heat in cameras. Unlike color noise which is low frequency, luminance noise is the same high frequency in which lies the texture of the image. And that's why it has been so hard to remove this luma noise while keeping the texture intact. So our goal will be to preserve the outline texture of the image. So let's begin. So in this first step, I'm going to create a duplicate of this image and change the color mode to lab. It has a wider color gamut than RGB and CMYK. Take a look at this video above to learn everything about color spaces in Photoshop. Also, if your original file was a 16-bit RGB, make sure to change it to 8-bit in the lab mode. Unlike the RGB or CMYK modes, which is divided in color channels, the lab mode has the lightness or luminosity channel along with the A channel that balances the green and magenta and the B channel that holds information from blue to yellow. And if you want to see your channels in color like this, go to settings, interface and check the show channels in color option. The reason to convert to the lab color mode is to find the edges based on true luminosity of the image, which is found in the lightness channel that completely disregards color. And this channel is a bit different from the luminosity mask created in RGB mode, which is based on grayscale brightness levels. If you want to understand luminosity or lightness and how is it different from brightness, I've explained this with examples in the color theory video. So with the lightness channel selected, I'm going to go to filter, filter gallery, and then choose glowing edges. The glowing edges filter finds the edge details of the photo and highlights them in white while all other surface areas are left in black. And this filter doesn't work in 16 bits so that's why we had to convert to 8 bits in the beginning. Now the first thing I'll do is crank the smoothness slider to the max. This makes the important areas bright enough without highlighting the noise. Next with the edge width slider you can adjust the width of the white areas which are the details of the image. The finer the details the lower your value should be. And edge brightness allows you to set the brightness of the details selected. Now we will be emphasizing the brightness more in the next step. So make sure not to brighten too much now in order to avoid highlighting the noise. So once you have a clear outline, click OK. Now we need to go to Image, Adjustments and Brightness Contrast. For this step, I'm going to check the Use Legacy box, which is the original and a harsher brightness contrast algorithm we had back in Photoshop 4 until CS3. So when I increase the contrast slider, I'm emphasizing the white outlines and darkening the black where the noise is. You can also decrease the brightness slider slightly to darken the blacks further if required. Now that we have defined the edges on this channel, we need to select it. And you can do this by holding Ctrl or Command and then clicking on the channel layer icon. This makes the white area selected where outline texture details lie. But for our next step, we need to denoise everything else but this. So I'll invert the selection using the shortcut Ctrl or Command Shift I. And now the dark areas are selected. So now that we have our selection, all we need to do is drag it to our main RGB document. And if you use the Move tool to do this, it will drag the content of this selection, which we don't want. What we want is to drag only the selection. So click on any of these selection tools, which will enable us to drag the selection to the other document. And now have a look. If you hold Shift and then let go and drop the selection, it snaps into place. And if you don't hold shift and simply drop it, you will have to realign the selection with the image. And this shortcut works even with dragging and dropping images between documents. So if you're thinking, could this selection be done in the RGB mode itself? Yes, definitely. But the lightness channel makes a tiny bit better selection. And also the workflow is better because once you have the selection, you simply close the duplicate lab document without having to deal with the extra layers and channels in your main RGB document. So now that we have our selection that protects the outline details, let's reduce some noise. What I need to do now is make a copy of this layer, convert it to smart object, create a mask of this selection and then go to the camera raw filter. 
And for those who have the Pro Workflow X panel, and if you set the Apply LUT button as profiles as shown in this video, you can simply click on the Apply LUT button. And you don't have to use this to apply LUTs always. You can use it as a camera or filter like we're doing here to reduce noise. So I'm going to go to the Details tab which has the Noise Reduction sliders. First, I'll increase the Luminance Noise slider and move the Luminance details to 0 at first. And if your image also has color noise, you can reduce it by using the color noise slider. Next, I'll gradually increase the luminance details, but as soon as I do that, you will notice all the noise starts showing up again. But if I increase the luminance noise slider, it will blur the details. If only Photoshop had a slider to control the high frequency noise. Oh wait, didn't they add a texture slider to boost the high frequency details? So what if I go to the basic adjustments tab, and use this new texture slider to remove the high frequency noise. Wow, it works! And that my friends is your new noise reduction slider hidden in plain sight. For those who know the basics of frequency separation, you will know that the texture of the image lies in the high frequency. And if you remember that the luminance noise is on the same high frequency. So this texture slider doubles up as a great noise reduction slider. Also, you might want to increase the clarity a tiny bit because the noise reduction usually flattens the overall tone of the image. Now remember that the edge details are protected by the selection and will have some grain. So avoid removing all the noise and making it buttery smooth. There has to be a very slight visible grain in the smooth areas as well so that the transitions look organic. Once you're done and you click OK, you will have a smart object with the camera raw filter applied and you can change the noise settings anytime from here. And if I click on the mask and go to its properties, I can reduce the density of the mask which will soften the edge details. And with the feather slider, I can also feather the selection. But I prefer to simply paint on the mask. So making sure that the mask is selected by clicking on the mask and making it active. Then take a soft white brush and paint on the areas to smooth the noise transition. Also paint in the areas that have details that don't need to be protected. Like this outline of the ear which is already out of focus. Now let's take a look at the before and the after. Before and after. You see how well the details in the eye are maintained? This would not have been possible without the edge selection that we did in the first step. Now go ahead and try this on your own images and leave a comment below if it works for your style of images or not. Also let me know what photography related Photoshop tutorials you would like to see on this channel. So I hope this video was helpful and don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for new tutorials as they come out next week. Until then, have fun retouching.